Lucretia Mott was born on January 3, 1793 on Nantucket Island, Massachusetts. She was raised as a Quaker, which automatically installed the idea of equality in her life. Her father was a ship captain, meaning he was away at sea for several months at a time. However, he changed occupations when she was 10, which led him to move to Boston. Growing up in a Quaker household, she was taught the importance of equality, which prepared her to lead in reforming social issues. At the age of 13, she gained a further education attending a boarding school, which she later taught and met her future husband, James Mott. She was surprised by the lack of opportunities for women when it came to teaching and later moved to Philadelphia where she would get married and have six children. Having a strong religious background, she pursued a career as a preacher in her 20s with the support of her husband and expressed the Quaker ideals and her insight on the values of equality, integrity, and peace among all people. She would also travel across state lines to attend religious meetings, which made her popular amongst other reformers. Three years later, when her father died in 1815, her family was left in a large amount of debt. So her mother, husband, and her worked together to become economically stable. Throughout all of these hardships, her faith was an important support system that was strongly emphasized in her family and relayed into social political views she worked to conform. The overall theme she focused on was the idea of equality. She pushed to reform social and political issues of slavery as well as advocated for women's rights. Her actions and intentions became well known through her preaching, although she underwent continuous discrimination doing so being a woman. In 1830, she was a member of William Lloyd Garrison's Anti-Slavery Society. In 1833, she transferred her abolitionist views into founding the Philadelphia Female Anti-Slavery Society. The second time she hosted this event, 17,000 protesters burned down Pennsylvania Hall and attempted to burn down Mott's house, but failed. Luckily, the woman escaped. In 1840, she participated in the World Anti-Slavery Convention in London, where she wasn't allowed to attend meetings given that she lacked rights as a female. Here she met Elizabeth Cady Stanton, a fellow abolitionist. They related over the fact that they had suppressed rights being females, which directly conveyed to their limited participation in these meetings. The two vowed to work together and establish a women's rights meetings when they turned to the U.S., which later became the Women's Rights Convention. The convention was held in Seneca Falls in 1848 and was what ultimately sparked the suffrage movement for women and discussed the social, civil, and religious rights of women. During this convention, Lucretia Mott, Elizabeth Stanton, and other feminists demanded that women should be seen as equals in every aspect of life, not just in relation to marriage and family, but from an educational, economic, and religious view. One of the solutions they saw to the problem was rewriting the Declaration of Independence to be inclusive for females and called it the Declaration of Sentiments. Some of these rights included the right to vote, divorce, and own property. While focusing on advocating for women's rights, she continued to push towards anti-slavery movements, which she believed went hand in hand. After the Fugitive Slave Act passed, her and her husband became a part of the Underground Railroad and helped a slave escape bondage. Although she didn't support the Civil War, being a pacifist, she was overjoyed to see slavery abolished in 1865, given all the work she put in to reform African American rights, and stated, Any great change must expect great opposition because it shakes the very foundation of privilege. She also helped found Swarthmore College in 1964 with a group of Quakers in hopes to promote higher education for both men and women. In 1868, her intense promotion of social reforms caused her to take role as the first president of the American Equal Rights Association, where she continued to push for justice for both women and African Americans. She died in 1880 of pneumonia, and although she never got to see women have the right to vote, she did live to see the end of slavery. Her legacy was so great that her companions referred to her as the greatest American woman of the 19th century. Boom.